Hey, welcome back. I got a couple different topics I want to go over tonight, but I think I'll try to break them into different videos for, for reasons. Uh, we'll see how it goes as I put things together. But this first video tonight, I wanted to talk about um, water, right? So um, you guys know, or you should know if you've seen any of my videos, that here in the Philippines, um, regular potable drinking water is something you buy, typically. Um, especially out in the province, you buy it by the five gallon bucket and you have it home delivered. And uh, it's typical in a lot of places. So here um, we have our own uh, water purification business, right? So not only are we making small amounts of water, we create about 5,000 gallons of uh, product, which is purified drinking water a day. And we have our own wells and uh, that's something I'll talk about in a second. So water, um, obviously survival depends on the human body's ability to consume and drink water, right? So we all talk about food and, and, and we all talk about water and shelter, but water is something that a lot of people are taking um, for granted. You know, maybe not out here in the Philippines and the province as much, but uh, um, you see all the rain out here and you think, wow, there's an abundance of water. Um, there's not, right? So. That's a lot of water that you just can't drink, and what it does is it causes flooding. I mean, there's flooding everywhere right now in the world, which is amazing, because at the same time, there's droughts everywhere. Um, water crisis in the UK, water crisis in California specifically, but um, I think Arizona was just ordered um, to reduce their entire consumption from the Lake Mead area, which is incredibly low. Um, if you're following any kind of news anywhere, about just about any region in the world, you'll learn that there's large droughts. And it's kind of conflicting. And I don't know if it's climate issues or just natural progression of things, but uh, we're having major flooding like we had in Vegas, uh, United States last week. Um, yet we're having huge drought problems. And droughts cause a lot of downward um, issues. So. So consider California's biggest problem with the farmers. There's just not, I mean, they've been tapping the underground water sources for 20 years and they're drying up. Um, the water coming in for consumption um, by the population um, is drying up, Lake Mead and you know Lake Folsom and a bunch of other lakes out there. And what happens is farmers can't grow crops without water, right? So when you have a drought and, and a less rainfall than normal, or what happens is you get all your rainfall at once and it floods and all washes away, you're not getting consistent water um, in order to produce crops. And if you're not producing crops, you're not making food. And if you're not making food, the price of normal food goes up, right? So it's, it's this um, constant feeding issue problem, right? Um, here in the Philippines, we have droughts too. Summertime, um, there's long stretches without any rain and you know, a lot of crops fail and, it, and it's, uh, important to understand that you know especially where i live this is a farming community and water is definitely a, a commodity now in, in a in a personal survival note you know i'm not bugging out so i'm, I'm fortifying my bugging site which is you know where i'm currently sitting out in the garage right now sorry about the noise but i have two wells not just one i have one extremely deep well that i put in uh, which is a process in the philippines to get a well permit and we'll talk about that another time but uh, I didn't just go down, I went down uh, what they call 10 pipes, which is 200 feet, until I hit a good back pressure water source, right? So I'm not just hitting the groundwater, which is very high here, actually. Um, I went down for good water. I will not run out of water at all. I'm not concerned about ever running out of water. My concern is pump maintenance and uh, well maintenance, but the water source is always gonna be there. I'm okay with that. The other well I use primarily for the house, um, that does the, the, the toilets, the bathroom, the shower, um, all the sinks and stuff like that. And it's a much more shallow well and it relies on groundwater. But anyways, back to my point, I'm, I'm kind of curious because what I experienced personally during the pandemic and all the lockdowns is water starts to become a commodity. I mean, we all know that drinking water is a must have and, and I'm talking to people in the US and the price of water is going up. I mean, everyone screams about petrol and gas prices, but you know, go to 7-Eleven and buy a bottle of, of purified water. Um, per gallon, you're paying more for that than you're paying for 
um, expensive dairy like milk or even gasoline per gallon. So drinkable potable water, um, is it a commodity, right? So during the pandemic, back to this point, um, we were considered a critical business, right? Uh, we were given special permits to allow my employees to come in, allow them to work, allow them to deliver water, right? Makes sense, you know, I, I totally agree with that policy, by the way. But in, in an, another forced lockdown or another pandemic or, you know, a shit hits the fan scenario or, or major drought problems where water just not available to the regular normal person, and in a collapse, can water be used as a barter system? You know, of course, right? So I can trade water for other items, without a doubt. Um, I'm not concerned about it, but I'm, I'm just amazed how many people worldwide are going through uh, water shortages and water crises. We talk about food crisis and energy crisis, and the water shortage doesn't get a lot of talk about it, but I'm concerned that all these countries that are experiencing 60, 70% problems with regular groundwater in, in runoff in lake and stream and reservoirs um, and these countries rely on water for hydroelectric or for agricultural reasons they're all in crisis right now let alone for drinking water so I might be rambling a little bit but I was just sitting there thinking about all this and I'm thinking that if if you're a prepper of any kind and you have the ability to put in uh, your own wells, uh, do it right the first time and then protect that water source. It's, it's kind of funny because water is a commodity and it was actually traded on the, uh, I think New York Stock Exchange as a commodity for a time, uh, where people were hedging you know, against water prices, right? So, which is strange because you think water would be just a, you know, a right to have, right? Um, it's not so. A lot of states in the U.S. will dramatically limit the amount of rainwater you can collect. Can you imagine putting a bucket out when it's raining and then told you can only collect X amount of gallons because the rest of it is owned by the land owner or the government or the ecosystem or whatever reasoning? You can't even collect what falls out of the sky. Not that it's drinkable water. I see, I've seen a lot of people here drink the water um, rainwater directly as it falls out of the, off the roof and um, I'm just amazed that they do that because uh, I've seen cats crawl across the roofs, right? So we all know what that water is going through to get there. But uh, I see it in my water business, right? During the rainy season, my demand for water decreases and I'm assuming for two main reasons. One, people are collecting their own water. Hopefully they're boiling it before they drink it. And two, it's just not quite as hot out so they're not as thirsty. Right, so it makes sense. I have ebbs and lows in my business. But I sell a lot of water. I, I mean, a water business, if you look at the, the video I, I have describing it, um, it's the smartest thing a prepper could do um, to make money during non-emergency times, but to have as backup um, your own private secure water source. If you're out in the province um, looking to get in a well, they're not expensive, surprisingly. Uh, to have a well put in. And if you hit a good water source, I'm guaranteeing that you'll check off one of the number one items a prepper always worries about is drinking water, right? So if you have all the drinking water that you and your immediate family and people around you will need, and then you have excess, you will definitely be able to trade. Sorry about the road noise, guys. You'll definitely be able to trade water for other items such as food um, or other basic materials or basic needs, medicines, whatever you're missing. And I was just wondering how many people stockpile water, right? So in the U.S. when I lived there, your water was always on. It was almost like a given. You know, with the exception of a few areas like Flint, Michigan, where the government screwed up so bad that they polluted everything and you just couldn't drink the water that the municipality still charged you for, right? They didn't stop charging you for the privilege of them delivering poisonous water to you, um, but uh, you couldn't drink it. Most people don't think about stocking up water for long term, right? I've seen preppers take a large blue barrel or two large blue barrels and go, all right, I have two years worth of food, which is all freeze dried food, which all requires water to reconstitute. Keep that in mind. And then they'll have 
500 gallons of water. And you're like, wow, that's a lot of water. And, and you know what, 500 gallons of water when everyone's eating uh, freeze-dried food and showering and drinking is not a lot of water. And the only way you're really gonna get around that is doing something like I did, putting in a well. Um, anyways, I have, I have no real thoughts other than I just wanted to talk about you know, having water and the fact that water can be and probably is considered the new gold, right? So um, I know people will pay for water because they pay me every day for water. So it's definitely a valuable commodity, but it's also one of the main three or four things as a prepper you need to make sure you have. And on that note, that was just me rambling on about water tonight. Um, I hope that uh, you guys already know this stuff. Um, I do look forward to any comments or feedbacks regarding um, other options for having a secure water source. And uh, I appreciate you guys just listening to me rambling. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this little bit of uh, uh, discussion. And uh, I hope you hit the like button. With that, have a good day.